moving over to the defensive side of the ball, last season they ranked dead last in the FBS, allowing an average of 516.6 yards per game in 2023. What does Todd Orlando need to do with this 3-3-5 defense to get things turned around? Well, he's got he's got to do what he's in the process of doing. He's got to build the roster. Um, again, uh, not a lot of depth, especially on defensive line. They didn't get much of a pass rush at all last year. Not a lot of sacks, not a lot of run stoppage for the most part. And that just brought pressure on the rest of the defense. It made it tougher for the linebackers, made it tougher for the secondary. And one problem just kind of flowed to the next problem. The depth was an issue. They just didn't have enough guys they trusted defensively to put on the field. So two things would happen there. Number one, when you have the inevitable injuries, you're looking around to try to adjust and and bring in guys and maybe move them to different positions. The other issue they had was that they had guys on the field for more snaps than they would like. And what they're really hoping to is to get a strong second unit defensive line. So they've really got like 10 guys that they feel good about to rotate and keep all those guys fresh, especially late in the game. That's where you'll see progress from that group if they can put that together this year. Well, let's talk more about this defensive line. The group lost Jonathan Ross to graduation and Trammell Logan and Lloyd Summerall to the portal. How did the group look in the spring? Uh, they've uh, they've definitely got some talent. They're, too, going to, to uh, depend on some newcomers coming in. Um, I think Jason Vaughn, who's healthy again, will be a key contributor there. There's an interesting guy, too, that I'm anxious to see, Bernard Gooden. He's a transfer from Wake Forest, was with the team all last year. They thought he was going to play last year. The eligibility didn't come through from the NCAA, so he didn't play last year. Cleared to go this year, I think he's going to show some passion after sitting out last year. So I think he'll be a guy to watch. Newcomers coming in are going to have to contribute to build that depth. And again, much like the offensive line, the defensive line was probably the other main area of concern and how they go through the practices and how they perform in fall camp. It's going to be something to really watch this year, I think. Who do you think makes up this uh, starting defensive line here in 2024? Oh, boy, I don't don't know. I don't think many people know at this point. I think there's going to be a lot of battles there in the fall. And, again, I I think if they have their way and they're happy with the group they've got, you can look at five starters, but the real story is going to be ten guys because they have got to get – more guys getting significant snaps week in and week out. How it's going to land, it's hard to handicap right now, and it's really hard to handicap. You may see a starter play 30 plays and a non-starter play 60 plays. You know, It's just a question of, of the matchups and, and who's performing the best. Moving over to the linebackers, they look like a strong group heading into 2024. Highlighting this room is the return of their leading tackler from a year ago, Jalen Schuler. What can we expect from the linebackers in 2024? Schuler's the leader, no doubt about that. He's usually the leading tackler at a very good spring game. He was all over the field and finished last year very strong as well. They've got some veterans coming back, uh, guys like Jamie Petway, an FAU transfer that played well for them last year. DJ Gordon is another interesting guy, a world of talent, transfer from Minnesota, but he had some ups and downs last year as well. So they're going to need some contributions from him. And again, very much like every other spot in the defense, they've got to build depth. They've got to have multiple guys getting snaps, but Schuler is going to be the guy to watch, no doubt about that. The defensive backfield lost a couple good ones to graduation in Daquan Evans and Braxton Clark, but overall the room has some experience coming back with guys like Jalen Stokes, Logan Berry Hill, and Amaris Brown. 
what can we expect from this unit in 2024? I think they will be bigger, faster, and more athletic. They've really worked hard to rebuild this area. Evans is a big loss. He was a good cover guy. He was a great hitter, and he was a terrific pass rusher. He was one of the sack leaders on the team coming out of the defensive secondary. So he's going to be missed, but they've got some guys coming back that are going to help. One guy to watch in the secondary I think can really help them is Ben Knox. He's a cornerback. This will be his final season of college football. He had a great fall camp in 2023 and hurt his knee on one of the very last practices missed the whole season. And I'm telling you, the coaches were heartbroken when that happened. They were really counting on him last year. So again, follow the pattern of all the defensive areas for South Florida. They need to have more depth, but I think they've got better size, better speed there. And that's an area they, they feel strongly they've got to shore up over 2023. Who do you think replaces Daquan Evans' role here in 2024? Maybe Ben Knox. You know, I, I think as a team leader uh, and as a veteran, I think there's a certain uniqueness to Evans with the pass rushing ability in particular that is probably difficult for anyone to replicate. But right now they just want good cover guys. They want to be able to – give the linebackers and the defensive line a little more time. You know, when you really think about last year and you look at those defensive numbers, the conclusion was nobody gave anybody else enough time. The defensive line didn't have enough time to get to the quarterback. The linebackers didn't have enough time to get position to stop the run. The defensive secondary didn't have enough time to hold coverage. So you're, you're looking at trying to bring all those units together. And I think once you see improvement at one of them, then it goes as a ripple effect and you see all three get better. If you had a picky defensive player to have a breakout type season in 2024, who would that be? Well, I think Schuler is, is the main guy there. I think he's most likely going to be the leading tackler. Um, I think we'll be calling his name a lot, especially at trying to stop the run. Um, I, I would really hope that DJ Gordon has a big year for them out of the linebacker position because when he is playing at his peak, he is one talented guy. Uh, needs to find some consistency, but he can really help them this year if he's on point. Uh -huh.